Time now for your morning rush. A bill, a bill legalizing recreational marijuana in New Mexico is now heading to the governor's desk. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham is calling it a significant victory for our state. The bill would legalize cannabis for people 21 years and older. Now, there will be limits on how much a person can buy and possess. Once the governor signs that bill, it will go into effect April of 2022. The CDC is urging people to celebrate Easter outdoors. The agency says you should still social distance, but say fully vaccinated people can gather without masks. You're advised to avoid large crowds and gather with people in your immediate household. The agency is also encouraging people to stay outside while they celebrate. Next week, all New Mexicans over the age of 16 will be eligible to receive their COVID-19 vaccine. The state says that this is partly because they can no longer fill the appointments with just people in Phase 1, especially in rural areas. Well, the state is expect expected to receive more shipments of the vaccine doses sometime over the next few weeks. In the meantime, a huge setback. 15 million doses of Johnson & Johnson's COVID-19 vaccine are ruined. After a mix-up at a Baltimore manufacturing plant, reports say that workers at the plant accidentally mixed up the vaccine's ingredients several weeks ago before it was ready for filling. No word on if this will affect vaccine shipments to New Mexico. And today is going to be a nice day, but more clouds in the forecast for the afternoon. Temperatures climbing from the 30s this morning to 57 by 12 o'clock and into the upper 60s for our daytime highs. Students at UNM can expect an in-person graduation ceremony this May. The university announced the news yesterday. Now, the graduation is scheduled for May 15th at University Stadium. While NMSU is allowing two guests per student for their graduations, no guests will be permitted at UNM ceremony, but the event will be live streamed. The father of the girl killed in Tuesday's suspected drunk driving crash says he wants people to remember her as a happy and outgoing child. Joseph Moya says his daughter, Emma Raya, was in the car that crashed on I-25 near the Big Eye. Her mom, her mom's friend, and three other kids were with her when the driver, who was suspected of being drunk, was speeding and caused the car to crash into a concrete barrier. Emma Raya and a baby boy died. Unemployed Americans who, have over, who may have overpaid on their 2020 taxes could expect a refund in May. Under the American Rescue Plan, up to $10,200 in unemployment benefits are exempt from the federal income tax. But because that law was signed on March 11th, some people had already filed their taxes. Now, for those taxpayers, the IRS plans to make the appropriate change to their return. Republican nominee for New Mexico's open congressional seat, Mark Morris, says getting resources from the federal government to combat crime here is one of his top priorities. He says he will also push back on the Biden administration's pause of new federal oil and gas leases. The state senator also highlighted that his small business, a health care laboratory, provided COVID tests. The New Mexico Democratic Party has now picked State Representative Melanie Stansbury to run for Albuquerque's open congressional seat. Stansbury has served in the state legislature for two years, representing parts of northeast Albuquerque and the foothills. She is running against Republican State Senator Mark Moores and Libertarian Chris Manning. That special election is on June 1st. And here's a look at the Metro Threat Index for today. Staying nice and low because we are only expecting the cold temperatures this morning, and that's really the only issue. The Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine could be available for middle and high schoolers soon. A new data is now showing that it's effective in kids between the ages of 12 and 15. Researchers say the antibody responses in this age group actually exceeded those in people ages 16 through 25, also promising there was also no serious side effects reported. The state is now giving local high schoolers the chance to have a COVID-safe prom. The Public Education Department is now asking schools to hold it outside. If a school does host it inside, though, they should not exceed the capacity for indoor venues. That's 33% for tur turquoise counties and 25% for green. No indoor proms will be allowed for yellow or red counties. You'll soon be able to purchase tickets for the New Mexico United's home opener. Now tickets will be released digitally in three waves ahead of each game. The first wave is for people who donated their 2020 season tickets to Somos Unidos. The second wave is for those who rolled their season tickets from 2020 to 2022. The final wave is for the general public. Los Alamos National Laboratory is continuing a move to Santa Fe for about 75 employees. They're taking over two additional properties at Pacheco and St. Michael's Drive that can accommodate 500 more employees. Well, the lab has about 2,900 employees who now live in Santa Fe County, so they hope that this will have a trickle-down effect within the local economy. And now let's get a look at that morning drive. Here's a look at the maps. They're all green. No accidents or slowdowns to report. And tracker this morning going east on I-40 at Rio Grande, seeing lots of cars out there, and the sun just starting to come up on a bright, sunny morning. Janine Mason, the star of the CW's Roswell, New Mexico, is using her platform to promote the industry and support local businesses. The show is already cleared for a season four, but Mason says she hopes 
with her time in the state, it doesn't come to a close for many years to come. Season three is set to wrap up production next month, but a premiere date has not been announced just yet. Welcome back. On this day in 1963, there was pee up to golf ball size hail that lasted for at least six minutes in hops, causing damage to windows, cars, and signs. Thankfully, no uh, forecast for severe weather as we head into our holiday weekend. Time now for the five facts. At number five, you'll soon be able to purchase tickets for the New Mexico United's home opener, but that process will be a little bit different this year. That's now tickets will be released in three waves ahead of each game. The first wave is for people who donated their 2020 season tickets to Somos Unidos. The second wave is for those who rolled out their season tickets from 2020 to 2022. The final wave is for the general public. Now the tickets will be sold in pods of varying sizes and will be sold digitally. Number four now, starting on Monday, all New Mexicans over the age of 16 will be eligible to receive their COVID-19 vaccine. The state says this is partly because they can no longer fill appointments with just people in phase one, especially in rural areas. Also, they hope this will encourage younger people to sign up. The state is expected to receive more shipments of vaccine doses over the next few weeks. Very cold this morning with temperatures in the teens, 20s, and 30s all across the state. So you're going to want to add those extra layers on before you head out for your morning commute. Number two now this morning, a grieving father is making sure that the world remembers his seven-year-old daughter who was killed in a suspected drunk driving crash. Joseph Moya says his daughter, Amaria, was in the car that crashed early Tuesday morning on I-25 near the Big Eye. Her mom, her mom's friend, and three other kids were with her. Police say the driver was speeding when the car went airborne and crashed into a concrete barrier. Amariah and a boy, who was not even a year old, had died. Her dad says that she was a very happy and outgoing kid who loved video games and playing with her pet snake. He's now raising money for her funeral. We have a link if you'd like to help them out. At number one this morning, a bill legalizing recreational marijuana in New Mexico is now heading to the governor's desk. Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham is calling it a significant victory for our state, tweeting out that her signing pen is ready. Here's how it's going to work. The bill would legalize adult-use cannabis for people 21 years and older. There will be limits on how much a person can buy and possess. Now, this would also be regulated, regulated by the government with a maximum of a 20% tax. The Senate was the final hurdle, passing that bill with a 22-15 to 15 vote. Once the governor signs it, it will go into effect next year.